Now we're going to take a look at the topic of factoring polynomials. And this is a really good topic. It's an important topic too. But it's also a little bit tricky. But we will just be looking at it at an introductory level right now. And we'll go into more detail on this in the Algebra 1 class. But for now, an introduction to factoring and specifically factoring polynomials. Well first, what is factoring? What's meant by this term? Well remember that if we have two things multiplied together, like this, 3 times 5 equals 15, the 3 and the 5 are called factors. And factoring is the reverse of multiplying. So we can take a number like this, 21, and we can break it apart into two factors. 21 is equal to 3 times 7. And that was easy. We start with the number, and we found two factors, 3 and 7. We can also factor monomials, like 6a squared, for example, could be written as 2 times 3 times a times a. Or as another example, I could say 35x squared y. That could be written as 5 times 7 times x times x times y. I can take a monomial and break it apart into factors. What we're going to look at now, though, is factoring polynomials, which is a little bit trickier. And what I will do is work through a series of several examples of factoring polynomials and, and show you the main concepts along the way. And we'll start with a really simple one. In this example, we're given the polynomial 3a plus 3b, and we're told to factor it. Well, each term has a 3 in it, and that 3 can be factored out we could write this expression as 3 times in parentheses a plus b. And you can see we have two factors now, the 3 and the a plus b. Those two factors, 3 and a plus b. If we were to multiply those together, that would give us the original polynomial. Because you can see that if we multiply them, we have to distribute this 3. The 3 will get multiplied by the a, giving us the 3a, and it will get multiplied by the b, giving us the 3b, and those two things will be added together. Now you're used to distributing. That's something you've done before. Factoring, in many cases, is doing that in reverse. So you have to ask yourself, what factors would give me my, my polynomial when I multiply them back together? And finding a common factor in each term and factoring that out, that's always a good place to at least try to start. In the next example, we have 3a plus 6b, and we're, we're told to factor that. Well, I'm going to take this problem and rewrite it like this. 3a plus 3 times 2 times b. And now I can see that each term has a factor of 3 in it. So I'll factor out the 3. I can write this as 3 times a plus 2b. And you can check this. You can always check your factoring by multiplying. If I multiply the 3 times the a, I get 3a. And then I have my plus sign, plus. And then I multiply the 3 times the 2b, and that gives me a 6b. And you can see 3a plus 6b, that's my original problem. So my answer here, 3 times a plus 2b, is in fact mathematically equivalent to this. These two factors, the 3 and the a plus 2b, when multiplied together, give me the original expression. And again, take note, we found this common factor of 3, and we factored it out. All right, example number three here, 2ab plus 3a. We'll notice this 2ab is 2 times a times b, and this is 3 times a. In each case, we have a factor of a. So whenever there's a common factor, we can factor that out. So I'm going to write this as a times and this needs to be multiplied by what to give me 2ab? It needs to be multiplied by 2b. And over here, 
that's just going to be a 3. If I take the a outside of the parentheses, you can see when I redistribute it, I'll get the 3 times a. And again, you can always check by multiplying. I have factored this. I have two factors, so I try multiplying those together. Uh, a times 2b plus 3. It's easy to do. You can probably do this in your head. A times 2b is, is 2ab and a times 3 is 3a and that is in fact our original expression. So this is the correct answer. This is factored. 1, 2. It's broken apart into two factors. Two things that multiply together to give me the original expression. Alright, next example. 5x plus 5. Well the 5's are glaringly obvious right there. Each, each term has a 5 in it, so I can factor out the 5. I'll write it like this. 5 times x plus, and be careful here, x plus 1. And do the check on this, or at least watch me do it. If I multiply 5 and x plus 1, those two things, the 5 times the x gives me 5x, that's right. And then the 5 times the 1 gives me a 5 and that's right too. So when we take this term right here and we factor a 5 out of each of these terms, this term becomes the 1 right there, not a 0. The 5 times that 1 is 5. A similar thing happens in the next example. 9xy minus 9x. Okay, notice what I can factor out of each term. If you want to, you can rewrite this. You could say 9x times y minus 9x times 1. And then you could see the 9x present in each term. And I could factor it like this, 9x times y minus 1. And if, if you write it like that, you can see the y remains here after we take the 9x out, and the 1 remains here after we take the 9x out. And you can check this mentally. 9x times y gives you 9xy. We have a minus sign. And 9x times 1 gives you the 9x right there. Okay, I'll stop there for now and come back in the next video and do some more examples.